on that note, I'll introduce Hannah Sell, the Deputy General Secretary of the Social Club. against 
Absolutely. There are those that say they're part of the anti-cuts movement, but who also argue we can't oppose all cuts. We can oppose all cuts from central government, but we can't oppose those cuts that have been carried out by Labour councils. Because those Labour councils are our allies, and we want to have them on board with us, and therefore we don't oppose their cuts because they're reluctant. They're doing it with tears in their eyes, and therefore we should keep them on side. Now let's be clear about this. No matter what our political differences with Labour councillors, with Green councillors, even with Lib Dem councillors, if they say that they're prepared to fight the cuts, to vote against the cuts, to organise against the cuts, we will welcome them in the anti-cuts movement with open arms and will build a movement to support their stand. But the idea that Labour while claiming to be against them, that is not something that we can accept. I don't know how many people have had time, probably none of you, to read The Observer yet today. But there's a special investigation about an inner London council, which means a Labour council because they're all Labour councils, about what is going to be cut. And it says street lights will be switched off at night. Roads will be slept, swept less often. Home <coughs> repairs for council tenants will be refused. Libraries and children's centres will close. Potholes will no longer be fixed. Fees for swimming and sports will increase. Lunch and cuts for pensioners will go. Playgroups for children will go. Youth clubs and breakfast clubs will all be cancelled. And the list goes on. That's not the end of the list. But I'm sorry. No matter how sorry you are about carrying out those cuts, that is not acceptable. We call on Labour councils to take the Liverpool Road, as was said yesterday. Refuse to carry out the cuts. And we will help Strike. And such an event in Britain, a public sector general strike, would have 
an enormous effect in terrifying the capitalists, terrifying the government, and giving confidence to working class people, which would then mean if the government didn't retreat, the prospect of a 24 hour general strike of the whole workforce would be on the agenda. But the first step to build confidence in Britain, we're at the beginning of this struggle, is this question of a national demonstration. And we have already shown here, even as, at least compared to the tasks that we face, a relatively small party still, how we can act as a lever to move events and to change things. It was the PCS who went to the trade union, to the TUC Congress, and demanded a national demo on the 23rd of October. It was our suggestion that the National Shop Steward Network lobbied that Congress and demanded a national demonstration. That pressure has resulted in them calling a national demonstration, but as we all know, not until five months after the Comprehensive Spending Review. But do we accept that? Do we just wait for March? No. On that same lobby of the TUC General Council, it was our members of the Shop Steward Network who approached the RMT, approached the FBU, talked to the PCS, and that led to the London demonstration to Congress House on the 23rd of October, which was 5,000 strong. Similar demonstrations were organised up and down the country on our initiative. And that has now helped to give confidence to trade union activists up and down the country to back the PCS's call for a national demonstration before Christmas. So we are able to act as a lever to take the struggle forward at each stage. However, that's only one aspect of what we do. All of you, if you're not already, are going to be leading anti-cuts campaigns, struggles and strikes. In the colleges, you're going to be leading movements against the increase in the top-up fees. But while we're doing that, we cannot leave it just at fighting the cuts. We have to be clear, this government is a government of millionaires. It's a government that hates and detests the poor. But that is not the whole reason for the cuts that we are facing. From one end of Europe to the other, under governments like New Labour in Spain to governments like the Tories in France, the same cuts have been carried out because this is related to a crisis of capitalism. People used to say that Marx was outmoded, that his ideas weren't relevant anymore. And one of the reasons that they gave was the idea of a theory of increasing misery, that there would be an ever smaller number at the top who got ever richer, while for an ever growing number at the bottom there would be increasing misery. Who can argue that that is what 21st century capitalism means today? And as we fight against the cuts, we also have to raise with everybody we meet, join us in the struggle against the cuts, but also join us in the Socialist Party. Join us in the struggle for the socialist transformation of society. So that all of the science, the technique, the wealth that capitalism has created can be taken into the hands of the working class in order to develop a socialist planned economy. So that what should be the basic necessities of life, the right to a decent job, to a free education, to a home over your head, the right to retire when you've still got some life ahead of you, all of those things that capitalism can no longer grant, 